You know, it's Halloween. I guess everyone's entitled to one good scare, huh? Death has come to your little town, Sheriff. In the original and still the best Halloween, little six-year-old Michael Myers murders his teenage sister and gets locked away in an asylum. But then, 15 years later, he decides to escape and pick up where he left off by targeting Laurie Strode and her friends on Halloween night. He's gone. He's gone from here. The evil is gone. And in this film, there are a total of seven kills, all committed by the shape himself, which includes five people and two dogs. But before we rank those kills, let's go over a couple of the ground rules for this new ranking series. Smokey, this is not Nam. There are rules. Hey. Rule number one, if a kill happens off screen, it is automatically relegated to the bottom of this list. Now that doesn't always mean that the kill itself is particularly bad in the context of the movie, but in a video where I am ranking kills, you know, it kind of helps to actually see it happen. And rule number two, killing of animals again relegates the kill to the bottom of this list, unless specified otherwise. Reason being, I'm an animal lover, and while I couldn't give two shits about people getting hacked apart, leave those fur babies alone. Got the gist. But now that that bit of housekeeping is in order, let's dive into this ranking. Proceed with the countdown. <laughs> Coming in dead last at number seven on this ranking is the dog from the Myers house that Michael Myers kills off screen and decides to have for a little tasty snack. He got hungry. Now I know that this was used to set up Michael's nature and that he's so evil that he would kill a dog and then eat it, but we didn't need to see any of that shit, and I'm glad we didn't. So, it's dead last. Man wouldn't do that. This isn't a man. Coming in at number 6 is the Freddy Mercury looking mechanic that Michael kills off screen and gets his coveralls from. Now like I said before, not every kill is so important that it needs to be seen, and certainly this isn't one of them. But, based on the rules I already laid out, and for the sake of this ranking, this kill is where it's at. Number five is the killing of Lindsay Wallace's dog, Lester. Lester's barking again and getting on my nerves again. Now, according to the rules that I just laid out, any animal kill would normally be at the bottom of this list. However, this kill actually takes place on screen, where the two previous kills were off screen. So by default, I guess it's gotta go above those other two. But still, come on, Mikey. Coming in at number four is the killing of Judith Myers from the very beginning of this movie. Now, the kill itself isn't anything remarkable or special. Michael just stabs his sister and also looks really awkwardly at his own hand while stabbing his sister. But what makes this kill stand out is the entire POV shot leading up to this moment, which is without a doubt an iconic shot in horror history. And because of the significance of that and because of the significance of this kill being committed by a six-year-old child, I understand that a lot of fans would probably put this at the very top of their kill ranking. And while I fully acknowledge its iconic status, I think the three remaining kills in this movie are just a notch better. Which means coming in at number three is the killing of Annie. And I love the setup to this kill as we're kind of following Annie around as she's prepping herself to hook up with her boyfriend. And then when she gets in the car to leave, BAM! Michael Myers pops up in the back seat. Now I kid you not, for years I had only seen this movie in the 4x3, you know, standard TV ratio for years. So when I finally saw this movie for the first time in its true widescreen format, Michael Myers popping up the way that he did almost scared the shit out of me, even as a grown adult. And extra props go to this kill for getting the point across of a throat slit without actually seeing any blood. And then when she does die, like seriously, nobody can hear that car horn? Not even Clueless Loomis from a few houses down? Come on. He's gonna drive you home At number two is the strangulation of Linda. What's the matter? Can I get your ghost, Bob? Now this is probably one of Myers' more playful kills in the entire franchise. And by playful, I mean he obviously just stands there and does nothing. But look at him just standing there like a little spooky old ghost. But again, a simple strangulation ain't much to write home about, but it's all about the buildup. 
I love the fact that Linda is mistaking Myers for her boyfriend Bob, who Michael just killed down in the kitchen. And after she realizes that something's weird, she decides she's going to call Lori. And then the suspense really starts kicking in as Michael starts creeping up behind her. And just before Linda could possibly alert to Lori that something is afoot, Michael takes the telephone cord and strangles Linda to death. Just this whole sequence from when Myers shows up to when he kills Linda is so brilliantly executed and it's so suspenseful. The one drawback I do have is that the screaming Linda makes is a little over the top and cheesy. Now I get for the purposes of the story as to why, but I mean, yeah, it just sounds silly. Things go well, I might be showing her my O face. Uh, 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 <laughs> Hello? You know what I'm talking about. Uh, uh, and that means the number one kill in the original Halloween from 1978 is Michael Myers killing Bob. Come on out. Surprise, motherfucker. And again, much like the Annie kill, when Michael lunges out of that closet, I about shit my pants. But what I think puts this kill above the others is that it's a kill that really puts Michael Myers' supernatural aura on full display. I mean, Jesus, he picks up Bob with one hand and with relative ease, I might add, and then just pins his ass to the wall with a chef's knife with one clean stab. And it serves that asshole right too after making this comment. Okay, first I rip your clothes off, then you rip my clothes off, then we rip Lindsay's clothes off. Yeah, I think I got it. Yay, pedophile jokes are fun. Totally. Now, I mean, you gotta suspend a little bit of disbelief here that that size of a knife would be able to hold a fully grown adult man to the wall in that fashion, but I really don't care. It's my favorite kill from this movie and arguably one of the most iconic kills as it's been replicated fairly often in the franchise going forward. You still here? It's over. Go home. Well, there you have it. That was my ranking of these kills in this movie based off of nothing but my own personal preference. And please, if you did like the video, like, comment, and subscribe. And if you didn't like the video, well, go make one of your own and GTFO.